This is a second video supporting a laboratory uh, study on a basic permanent magnet DC motor and we're going to look at uh, formulating a simple model that can be used to design experiments and to help in model parameter uh, determination. The um, basic motor action that we usually use um, to represent a motor is shown here. Uh, I'll refer to this as the as an ideal EM conversion in the sense that we're only using it to represent the lossless conduction between electrical and mechanical um, parts of the system. Uh, this the electrical circuit is often used in basic schematics, circuit diagrams, um, but we'll be using also a bond graph formulation where we use a gyrator element to represent this type of physical system element. And the reason is that the relationship that is inherent to this motor action is that this motor, ideal motor torque can be expressed um, uh, as a constant, say, a motor constant, sometimes called a torque constant, or uh, so it's motor or torque constant. Times uh, the current in the armature circuit. So here you see the arm, the, the that current there. Now in a permanent magnet DC motor, Rm tends to be a constant value, and uh, note that it's going to have units of newton, say meters per amp in SI, and um, so that's one of the relationships. But inherent to this two-port element and uh, is the uh, is also the voltage or back EMF. And the back EMF, Vm, in the gyrator is uh, also the, const the same constant, Rm, times now the shaft speed, omega sub m. So note that in a gyrator, you have relationship between, in bond graph terminology, we call this an effort, and this is a flow. And uh, this is also an electrical effort, and this is the mechanical flow. So you kind of get this cross relationship in, in these elements. So these two constitutive relationships right here, the torque and the back EMF, are critical to our basic model of uh, basic motors like the permanent magnet DC motor. What we want to do in the lab is estimate R sub M. So as I mentioned, when we look at a, something like a gyrator, we're capturing this ideal power conversion. So keep in mind that this Vm Im is related to Tm, Ome, uh, Tm and Omega, and and the power you know in and out here uh, is equal on these two power bonds. Note that if if I'm flowing from electrical to mechanical, we call that a motor, right? But if the power changed directions and and went the other way, you know that's a generator. The same. The same, let me write that out, the generator. So um, we can use the same simple model to represent both types of electrical machines. So this is the ideal conversion, but we know that there's losses in motors, so we would have to include electrical resistance and some mechanical friction, and that's what we're going to show and uh, in order to have a more realistic model. And those are loss effects, right? Losses. And there could also be energy stored in the motor coil inductance, uh, the coil inductances, as well as in the rotational inertia. Uh, you can find that for some really small motors, especially like the one that we're going to be testing in, in this lab, the inductance can be very small. You know, sub -milli, you know, milli Henry, sometimes micro Henry's. So we're going to ignore the inductance here. But in some cases, you have to include that inductance, and it does help you to predict transients more properly. So uh, for this, uh, I'll show you where that goes in the model, but uh, we won't be including it in in um, in our discussion. So here's a uh, steady state model of the permanent magnet DC motor. And I've, I've only included uh, internal friction losses. So normally where we would have inductance would be on this bond here. We would have 
an I element to represent kinetic energy storage in the form of electrical energy and inductance. And I'm also leaving out, actually, I'm not showing it here, even though it will be included, is the, uh, uh, the rotor inertia. But let me take those out because I want to show you that you can build a steady state model just this way. All right. So, and, and normally, you know, this output bond here represents, you know, like if you had the little motor here and here are your two connections, it, it would, there would be a load attached to this. And that's kind of what I'm showing here. But um, I'm going to just assume that, that all of the load is, is, is due to internal resistance. Actually, in some of the lab experiments, we'll be attaching a little propeller here. So we'll just lump those two together. The internal losses on this little motors that we're testing are so small that um, we're just going to incorporate it into this uh, loss effect here. Here are the gyrated relationships that we already talked about, the torque and the back EMF. Now, if you apply causality, if you're familiar with causality, um, have, uh, you, you, you can then derive these relationships. And I'll assume that you can do that on your own. But the key uh, steps are to show that this current in, by the way, there would be an effort source here that would give you this input voltage and um, the, the the current in the motor um, can be shown to be equal to the input voltage minus the back EMF right divided by the resistance and then you can solve for the torque um, out which is going to be the ideal torque right which comes from here uh, less any losses okay so let's see how that then goes towards helping us derive uh, torque speed curve if we know those parameters you can then show that the this output torque is um, completely determined by knowing the motor constant the internal coil resistance of course the input voltage we also need to have the motor constant and the losses okay so the parameters that we need to have you know are of course the you know circled here um, and then the variables are you know are the speed of the shaft of course and the input voltage um, this speed by the way is um, in this case would be considered known as an input for example it might come from solving for the state the dynamic state of the inertia that would give us omega and then we could calculate the torque if we knew the voltage right so that's the that's the the, um, the usefulness of this steady state torque speed curve. And another way to write it is shown here. I've just kind of made it more compact, where this B effective term combines uh, all the, the different parameters that we need to know. And that B effective is just this slope. So this curve here, this graph, sometimes is all that you might see. Actually, the manufacturer sometimes might only give you this, this, this curve. Um, but you can see that if you knew the parameters, then you could uh, find that curve. And sometimes uh, for some high quality motors, you may be given both. You may be given all these essential parameters so that you can calculate this steady state torque speed curve.